What is a shed? It's a simple question. It's something that some of us have in our gardens. Some of us have access to. Some of us spend some time in. But what is a shed to a man? It can be a place where they can spend some time. It can be a bolt hole. It can be somewhere where a man can take stock of what's going on around him. It can be a place of quietness. It can be a place of activity. And that activity can be making things, it can be doing stuff, it can be fixing things. It could be getting your garden ready for spring. It could just be somewhere to go where you can get away from the pressures of the world. It can also be quite a lonely place. If you're in your shed at the bottom of your garden on your own, reflecting on what's going on in your life, the darkness can creep in. But most of all, a shed can be someone's sanctuary. But that does beg the question, what happens when a man doesn't have a shed? Where can he go to do those things that we want to do? Where can we go to make things? Where can we go to perhaps socialize? Where can we go just to ground ourselves to take stock of our lives? We could go to the pub. Pub's a great place. Pub's a great place to spend some time with your friends. Pub also serves alcohol. And if you're in a place where you're not happy, you're not enjoying life, life's looking a little bit bleak, suddenly alcohol becomes very accessible. What if you just go to the pub for a pint and a chat to your lifelong friends um, and to, to have, a so, uh, have a social life? It's a great place, it's a great environment to do that in. But these days, pubs are few and far between in rural communities. Um, and, and even in town centres, pubs are closing down. And not necessarily a place to go to get that quiet contemplation time or that quiet time with your friends. What would that mean to people? One of our shedders, um, self-explanatory, felt he had nowhere to go, no purpose anywhere anymore. And this inspired, this, this story has come, this, this, this man became a shedder on the back of Thrive two years ago. I was sat in Thrive along with Marcel and Bella, listening to Patrick Abrahams from the Froome Fru, Fru Men's Shed, talking about the shed and what it does and what the purpose of it was. And I'd been doing some work with Mug, Mail Uprising Guernsey, breaking the barriers about getting men to talk about their physical health, talk about their prostates, talk about their bowels. And we'd had a lot of success with breaking those taboos, getting people to talk. But one of the major taboos that we hadn't touched on yet, that men are notoriously rubbish about talking about was mental health. And Patrick's, Patrick, one of the stories that Patrick mentioned was he, how some of the shedders who were coming to the Free Men's Shed were suffering previously before finding the shed with loneliness and feeling alone and going into dark places and suffering with their mental health. And that resonated with me. Because these guys weren't talking about their mental health to anybody. They were alone. They were on their own. They had no one to talk to. Whether they were actually physically alone or not, they were mentally alone. And they had nowhere to go, no one to talk to, no, no friends to, to, to socialise with. They'd, most of the guys were retired. 
they'd worked all their lives, they'd had friends at work, their social aspect of their lives was at work. When men retire, when people get to 65 or 70, however, whatever age they retire at, they've worked so hard, they don't have any social life outside of work. And all of a sudden, that just stops. Their life just stops. They end up sat at home. They end up watching Jeremy Kyle. They end up getting under their wife's feet. They don't necessarily have a shed to go to to get out from under their wife's feet. An estimated 8 million men in the UK feel alone, uh, lonely at least once a week. 3 million say they'll feel lonely on a daily basis. And this one that scares me, 35% of men in the UK suffer from depression. Personally, I think that stat's a lot higher in Guernsey. We know from the media, from talking to people, from hearing from people like Phil at Man Club, that since 2015, that number's doubled. And for me, that is quite, <laughs> it, that, that's absolutely, it, it, it takes my breath away. But, that many men in Guernsey are committing suicide. We don't know the reasons, but a massive part of that reason is that they don't have anywhere to go, they feel alone. We know Guernsey has um, a very active business community, which is very stressful, which places a lot of demands on men's lives. And we know that when they get to retirement age, they pretty much are unsupported in what happens. So on the back of Thrive, we set, up, we, we set out on our journey to, set, to bring to Guernsey the first men's shed in Guernsey. With the help of the Dandelion Foundation, we found um, a packing shed uh, in St. Peter's, which was quite uh, rustic. <laughs> it was quite... Um, was interesting, let's put it that way. Uh, it hadn't been used for five years for the previous 10 years. It had been used as a variety of things. But we set out on our journey to open the men's shed, which we're still on. I had an ambitious goal. I wanted to open in three months. <laughs> then it was a more ambitious goal by saying, well, let's go open six months. Um, we're still not open yet properly, but it's a journey that we're on. But one of the things that we have found over the last two years is that we've got, we're, we've got guys coming to us from every section of the community, whether that's recently retired people, whether that's guys in their 20s. We've had ex-offenders coming to us who perhaps had not such a good start in life and they're wanting to turn their lives around. We've had people with addictions coming to us. They've stayed for a week, they've stayed for three, they're still around, they're still helping us. But what the shed has provided is a centre in the community where they can go with no expectations, with no obligations, with no requirements to do anything other than just come to the shed. And they can do anything that they want to help us to get to our ultimate goal, which is launching the shed. Whether that's putting the kettle on or helping us put the roof on. The key to what we do is just what I've just said. There's no obligation. But what we want you to do when you come to the shed, do a little bit of work, talk a little bit of talk. But when you do it, do it with everybody, involve everybody, speak to everybody. Whether it's just saying hello or having an in-depth conversation about what's going on in your lives. Two of our shedders um, became very good friends through the shed. 
they started going for a coffee, for a pint, after being at the shed. Both of them gentlemen of a certain age. One of them, uh, the, the conversation turned round to um, their health. And uh, one of the guys had noticed the other guy popping into the toilet quite a bit. This is where the mug connection comes in really handy. They had a conversation about what was going on. Turns out he had stage one prostate cancer um, and has had treatment for it. That was on the back of a conversation that happened while these guys just got to know each other while they were working and talking, talking and working. We like to, we, we've heard from people that have come to the shed that have said we've given them something to do. We've given them a sense of purpose. We've given them a goal. We've given them a reason to get up in the morning. We've given them a reason to get out of the house. We've given them a reason to let their wives have two or three hours on a Saturday morning to themselves while they just get out of the place and <laughs> do whatever it is that they want to do at the shed. And they're coming. They're co the guys are coming. They're helping us. Everything that we're doing at the moment is around refurbishing the shed and making the shed a much better place. One of the things that has really, really, really struck me, and I, I'm, I don't have a picture of it, which I'm really disappointed about, but um, we've, we've created an entrance lobby in, uh, in, in, into the shed. Um, and Marcel said, we made a stud wall, we made the frame of a stud wall, and uh, I said to Marcel, what are we going to cater with? Are you just going to get some chipboard or some plasterboard or something? He said, no, no, I've got, some, I've got a great idea. We've got this big stack of pallets. I said, okay, we'll make it out of those. I was like, oh, great, yeah, we'll just get some pallets, rip them apart, and nail them to the wall. It'd be brilliant. Okay. And Marcel said, no, 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 leave it with me, I've got this great idea. And what we've done, we've chopped up the pallets, we've made them nice quite uniform size, but we got the guys just chopping up the pallets. So we came up, they got the power tool, every man likes a power tool. They came up, they've got their power tools out. They started chopping up the pallets, making this big pile of wood. And we're like, I'm, not, I'm looking at this pile of wood thinking, that's rubbish, what are we going to do? It's going to go on the fire. It's, like, it's going to be like it. Master says, no, trust me, trust me. And then we all, all of us started looking at this pile thinking, right, we're going to put it on the wall. How are we going to do it? And we came up with a plan. And we started putting the little strips of wood on the wall. No, no real plan, no, no, nothing drawn out, just it was all in our heads, but a bit of guidance from myself. And everybody got involved with it. Everybody that's coming to the shed has got involved. And everybody's done their own little bit and put their own little take on it. Me, I'm a little bit, oh, that's a little bit, oh, what that I'll do. Someone else is measuring the angles, you know, right down, millimetre perfect, sanding it so it's nice, perf nice and lovely. But what we've got is this perfect little bit of the shed. When you walk in, everybody's done a little bit of it. And it's there, it's tangible. And I find myself touching it and running my hand over it. And it's not weird, it's just nice. It's tangible, it's, it's tactile, it's really great. But it represents, everybody that's come to the shed, it represents what they've done, what they've put into the shed. And I've noticed other people just look, they come in and they look at it and then they stop and they turn around and they take another look at it and think, that's amazing. And they feel it, they sense it. It's, 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 it's our part of the shed. It's given people a reason to go there. It's given us the opportunity to stand next to each other and talk. Guys are rubbish at talking to each other. We know that. Phil knows that. He's got a stick to prove it. Um, we, we're rubbish at talking to each other face to face. I don't sit down with my, my guy friends and talk. I'm, I ride my bike a lot. I, uh, they, probably to the annoyance of quite a few people in the room, but they, I'm having a chat with them while we're two abreast. Guys are rubbish talking face to face. We get to the cafe, we have a little bit of banter and that's it. Get to the workshop and we're having a discussion as we're doing stuff. Because sometimes that's a really deep and meaningful. Other times it's just banter and laughing at each other. Um, but we talk shoulder to shoulder. That's how men talk. That's how we communicate. That's where we're comfortable talking. No face to face, no eye contact, shoulder to shoulder. I can feel you there. You're there. I know you're there. I'm telling you about my, what's going on in my private bits. But we're having that conversation, shoulder to shoulder. And it's the same with what's going on with our mental health. Expressing those feelings without actually making eye contact, 
letting us, you know, I'm a bit down, I'll tell someone now. And, I'll tell, and, it, and it won't be face to face, it'll be when, they're, when we're next to each other. But that's how we talk, we talk shoulder to shoulder. We encourage guys to come to the shed. Pick up a tool. If you don't know what it does, ask someone. If you know what it does, show someone. If it's going to take your fingers off, get Marcel to tell you to stop what you're doing. But pick up a tool. We've got lots of tools. Do something with it. If you don't know what to do with it, ask. We'll show you what to do with it. But there comes a time when we just have to have bacon. That's about 12.30. We've got a ready supply of bacon, and if anybody wants to come up for a bacon roll and a cup of tea, you're welcome. No obligation other than eat the bacon. Like every good soul singer, we reach out. In the case of the men's shed, we've reached out to the Grand Courtil. Marcel started a project with uh, the Grand Courtil and the guys up there. We haven't necessarily got a shed We've got a lobby. We're hoping for a shed. But over the last year or so, Marcel has been going to the Grand Quartel every Wednesday morning and engaging with the residents of the Grand Quartel at the shed and getting them to do stuff, whether it's making projects, make it's ma making um, ball rolling games, making snooker cue holders. We've made stands for post boxes. Um, but we're involving the guys at the community center. And they're finding it incredibly beneficial. These guys live in a community. Some of them are single, some of them are still with their partners, but they're living in a community of people around their same age. And they, the effect that the shed is having on them, it bring, it's bringing them out of their shell. But this quote from Marcel just sums it up for me. You, cannot ha you don't have to have a shed. You can have a table. You can have a lobby. As long as you've got laughter and banter, you've got a reason for these guys to go there. We asked them last week, what, what, is this, what does the shed mean to you? And one of the guys, this one really resonate, resonated with me. I love coming here because otherwise I'd just be sat at home on my own. We've had a fantastic journey to get where we've got. This lovely beast of a man has been key to it. Um, at the very start, I had my, my, my moonshot. We're going to be open by March. We're going to be open by March. And Marcel looks at me and Bella's nodding. And says, You're a joke. There's no way it's going to be done. Um, Marcel got, we said, we said another three months, another three months. We keep on putting the, the opening back by three months. But Marcel, has, and I, I got really, really agitated by the fact that we're not open. I like doing things. I like getting things done. I'm a get it done person. Marcel said to me, just stop. Look around at what we've done. Look at what we've created. Look at these guys that are here. We've done it. We've done it already. It doesn't matter that we're not open yet. We've created somewhere where guys can come, do stuff, do things, and have a purpose in their life. It's like going through a valley. The valley can start off dark. The journey is through a long valley. At the end, there's the light. I am always looking at the light. I come from, came from the darkness, and I'm always looking at the light. And the light is where I want to be. And sometimes I miss all the stuff that's going on in between. I miss the natural beauty of the valley. I've seen the natural beauty of the valley now. I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. That's our journey. Don't look at the end goal. Look at how you, what you're doing to get there and how it is that you're going to get there and appreciate what you've done and appreciate the people that you've been around and appreciate the, fact, the effect that you've had on people. Thank you.